Okay, can you hear me? Okay, so good morning. I'm Juan Rotor for JP, and I'm going to talk about Mac OS application, especially native one. And this talk is about more uh, conceptual stuff rather than Swift language, but it's very important aspect to make fine applications. But before I get down to the content, let me introduce myself briefly. So as already introduced, I'm, um, I'm one or two for JP, and I'm, like you expected, this is not my real name, but my screen name. <laughs> In real life, I earn my living as a prof professional researcher. I'm not a person in the IT field, namely. That, that is, I usually perform experiments with people, analyze the results, and writing academic papers. But meanwhile, in the computer world, I may be known as a developer of Mac apps, especially for code editor. I invest my entire private time to develop native macOS applications, coding code in Swift, and maintaining open source projects, and even drawing graphical icons by myself. Sometimes, I provide only icons to Mac apps by other developers. In addition, I also organize a gathering community for people who develop native Mac applications to uh, exchange the knowledge for that. Thus, I actually do everything to bring more good native Mac OS application to the world because I do love Mac. <laughs> Regarding code editor, it is a general purpose plain text editor written in pure Swift and Coco, distributed for free, maintained as an OSS project, but actually developed only by me currently. You can see the entire code on GitHub. So it can be said this is a small project, although it has a significant number of users. In the plain text editor market, market there are a lot of rivals. There are classic TextMate or BB Edit, even classic Emacs and Vims, or modern editors developed by Adobe, Microsoft, or GitHub for free. This is a typical red ocean. Where remains the room for the apps that is maintained by an amateur developer? Users love Code Editor because it's native and integrated in macOS. Behaving natively itself is already worth choosing an application. As a researcher, let me perform a small survey with you. Question one. Please raise your hand up if you have experience with developing macOS application using AppKit in your life. 10% about? Okay, then. Please keep raising your hand up if one of those projects is still active. In other words, you wrote more than a single line of code in the past year. Okay. Hi, friends. Okay. <laughs> About 5% maybe? Thank you. The last question. Please raise your hand up if you write Swift mainly on Mac. <laughs> Good. Thank you. Please put your hand down. See, although most of people in this room write Swift on Mac, and those codes are written in Mac OS, uh, yes, and, and so developing Mac app is not so popular. Actually, also on online or paper base, not so much topics are discussed to create good Mac OS apps. So it's my pleasure to more developers become interested in Mac app development through this talk. Okay, as I mentioned in the introduction, the subject of my talk is developing native Mac OS application. It contains two keywords, native and Mac OS. I'll talk about these two things today. Well then, what would be a native Mac OS application? It is native if an app is written in Swift or Objective-C. Is it native if the app uses this Cocoa framework? Or is it native if the app follows the macOS human interface guideline? 
Generally speaking, most of people agree that an application that uses Cocoa Framework is a native application. However, what if when an application uses the Cocoa Framework, but in a totally wrong way? Is it better than an Electron app that is carefully designed to conform to the human interface guideline? Which one is better for users? First of all, what is native? And check in the dictionary, in the fifth definition, it says something designed for or built into a given system. So, according to it, an application that is designed for macOS is a native macOS application. Well, let's think about native language. As you already noticed, English is not my native language. And therefore, my English may be harder, than, harder to understand than native speakers. You may feel a kind of obstacles before reaching the content what I'd really like to say. That's because I sometimes use this word in the wrong way or have a Japanese accent. This is exactly the same when a user faces an application developed, an application developed by non-natively. In such a situation, the user may be distracted and can't con concentrate on the task they want to handle by using your app. What I say so far works under iOS also. However, as for macOS applications, behaving native is more significant than by iOS, in my opinion. Because in macOS world, you shouldn't control everything, even if it belongs to your app. Let's think about physical domain of an application on iOS and macOS. Under iOS, an app covers the entire display when active. On the other hand, under macOS, multiple apps overlap each other in the single display. In other words, the user sees also the windows of other applications when, while using your app. The window in macOS is, is literally the window to the content of the application. Users look at the application's content through a window. It can be said that a window frame does not belong to the application, but indicate the edge of the app's content. The outs of the edge belongs to the operating system. Regarding iOS apps, the frame of the app is a device. This is the reason why the root of the view is called UI window in iOS. On the contrary, this is also the reason why the user, the user interface is drawn more solid on macOS. Thickness and texture materials still remain in macOS though they are driven away in iOS 7. Windows and controls are touchable physical objects in the macOS world. Obviously, an application cannot physically deform an iPhone. But in macOS, you can design your windows, or speaking more generally, the out of the content root view. This is an exciting part of native macOS application development. Windows toolbar, graphical icons on the toolbar, as a various controls such as checkbox or sliders, or even description text in the preferences. All those things should be designed as a part of a Mac OS. They belong to your app, but belong to the system at the same time. You design them, but don't have limitless right to change them freely, because they are the components of that user touch and grab. As I said, in macOS, windows of different applications spread out on the same screen at the same time. Therefore, it's important for users that the component of the same purpose looks the same also visually. Necessary is to design not just as a single application, but also to harmonize beautifully with other apps in the same display. Not only visually, but also functionally, 
user flies around the app. They also select a chunk of text in an app and drag and drop it into another app. Quick look at document file of your app in Finder. Scroll a view of your app while another application is active. Or even control multiple apps via Apple Script. Users operate macOS rather than a sing single app. Remember how you use macOS daily. What if when you focus on working with an application and want to interact with another app briefly, but it behaves something differently from the app you currently work. Let me give a concrete example. Title bar, because this is my favorite component. Title bar is an area designed by app developers but belongs to the OS. The standard title bar has a metal-like texture with some visual detail indicating it has a thickness. The one-line pixel hairline highlight at the top or a drop shadow on the, from the toolbar buttons. These are the such as details. They afford users to grab it to move the, the window. This visual appearance also works as a sign for an ordinary window in the messy display. Nowadays, you can extend your control view until the top of the window and remove the texture. But then, user lose a clue to, of the window that can be grabbed. As for the window title on the bar, especially by document-based apps, you can see the folder hierarchy of the document file by command clicking the title. And even you can open one of those file folders in Finder. Or you know that you can drag and drag a small icon next to the title bar and drop to the doc or drop to the other apps. It acts just like an actual document file icon in Finder. When the app supports auth saving, you can also change the frame name, a file name by clicking the window title. The ti window title in the title bar is more than only displaying the window name. Some have put the window title as text in the toolbar and they hide the original title bar, maybe to make the title bar a little bit thinner. But then, user cannot use those cool features that they already, they already know. Let's respect the manners of the target platform and implement the features that user can use existing knowledge instead of ruining them. When user use a feature like um, belonging to the OS, they might not think they are using your app. They are already familiar with it. At the moment, users can focus on what they really want to do, and your application will fade away from their mind. Just like breathing, or just like you don't think about chopsticks when you use them. Sometimes, you need to write a bunch of code to let your own future mimic the native behavior. Then users may not even notice your new future, but use it. This is our goal. Being native is killing the ego of developers. Your application may be the most important stuff for your team. Your team knows everything future of it, you believe it is worth to invest time and effort. But who cares? In fact, the best thing for a user is achieving their aim without using your app. They won't fulfill their aim. Not use apps. Remove the barriers on their way and let users use your app without learning your unique interface that use you implement with effort. Be transparent and let users concentrate on the aim. Developing GUI ap application requires different skill sets. Some of you guys might think now, oh, this is talk about the domain for uh, my designer. It's not my business because I'm a programmer. 
No. Everything overlap each other. To bring out the best native design, programmers must know how a well-designed native application should behave. And designers need to know what kind of filter are provi provided by native APIs. Using native components helps you to support system features even you don't know them. Who of you knows everything well? What happens if a user uses a high contrast mode, voice over, right to, te right to left text? Which one from all system preferences options affect the individual apps? Or how to implement the spell suggestion in the context menu when users select a word wrongly spelled? Native components do a lot of stuff for free. But you also need to use AppKit properly. For that, the human interface guideline helps you. This is really the Bible for GUI application developers. If you haven't read it in the past year, you have to read it right after finishing this conference. I'm serious. This is for your apps to behave as user expected. By the way, you know, March Band is just around the corner. It seems as if this is an ideal chance to develop a native macOS application in iOS way. Is it true? Unfortunately, I'd like to say no. March Band is just an iPad emulator provided by Apple. A friend of mine, he's an awesome designer, by the way, once mentioned about March Band iOS style Mac app is just a good looking electron. <laughs> you really understand what he meant. You already know that the manner of iOS and macOS are different. And therefore, to create native application, you really need to design it for the target platform. Multiple is a great technology enabling porting iOS applications to Mac. You can reuse a lot of your existing cores to provide the macOS version. However, if you plan to provide a high quality Mac application, you still should choose AppKit that maximizes macOS power. But don't afraid, AppKit is not the terrible old school version of UIKit. It's just a bit different from the way you are used to. Furthermore, you already know macOS well, because you use it every day. And you also know that macOS is a beautiful operating system that makes your life happier. Let your macOS merge into it. Sum up. A good application should transparent and native. Minimize the ego of developers and let your users concentrate the essence of your service. For that, use the native frameworks, respect the human interface guidelines, and write code in the native language. Thanks. Enjoy development. 